What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about workflow tips. Workflow to me is very important because if you don't know shortcuts or how to access your DAW in a certain way, your workflow is slower and even if you have great songwriting, you're going to be hinged by this. You know, if you have to do a few extra clicks to get something done, times that by a thousand times you do that in a project, you know, each project you do, they're probably adding on a significant amount of time, probably at least 30 minutes to an hour. So I have 10 tips that I use almost all the time or I have set up to make my workflow better. One thing I do kind of pride myself in is my workflow. I really don't any like edit buttons, right click. I, I, I really kind of just learned all the shortcuts and I want to share them with you because I think it's very important. But before we get in the video, last week on the how to growl video, which if you haven't seen, I'll, I'll link it up here. I asked if we hit 400 um, followers on SoundCloud that I would release the remix that I teased to you guys. And guess what? We hit that. We're actually at right now as I record this on the Friday, um, October 8th, we're at 432. So I cannot thank you enough. That being said, boom, Die For Me official wait out flip is coming this Sunday, which will be October 10th. I'm dropping my Die For Me wait out remix. And the cool part is it's going to be free download because, you know, I appreciate you guys. It's going to be available on SoundCloud and it's going to be available on YouTube. Both of them will have the download links for you guys if you want to grab it and throw it in your library. You need to ask uh, another thing. We did say if we hit 450 followers by um, October the 15th that I will do a complete breakdown of that track. So and the bar is still high. But if we do achieve 500 followers before the 15th, I will make a free sample pack out of the track um, of the die for me flip so if you want free sounds hit that follow button if you're new here and one last thing one last self plug whatever Hurry up. Um, is that 65 percent of you are actually not subscribed to me so i hope in this video where you learn some stuff maybe that's a day that i can earn that subscription i am going to be trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of this year I think we're like 570 right now. I think it's totally achievable. You know, I'm going to keep pumping out content. And if we do, I have another surprise in stock for you guys if we hit that. So I know there's a lot of goals. And if you're already subscribed to me and followed me, I appreciate you guys a ton. And I'm going to shut up and we'll get into the tips. Let's get it. Yo guys, I, I just want to touch base on the disclaimer at the beginning. Like I said, during this tip video, the background is blurry. For some reason, my scaled output got put to one third, so I had to stretch it. Um, it is fixed for the next video, but just know the important stuff you guys need to see. I did go back and re-record the little snippets that made sense. So everything you guys do need to see, you will be able to. It'll be the form of a screenshot or if it's something that needs a move or something I did do uh, like a B-roll video. So Everything will be visible to see. Um, I appreciate it. As you can see, I'm editing it right now as I just discovered this. And yeah, we'll get into the tips now. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so we're in my just my uh, DAW here. And my first tip is going to be the most simplistic. And that's to have a template. If you have to set up all your routing and groups every time you're in a DAW, that is taking away a lot of time. So get your template set up how you like it. This is mine when I stock open it. Um, but if you're not sure how to set up your own template, once again, um, I have a ton of free resources. Check out this video. I don't know what side it goes on. Check out that video of a free template that I give you guys. It's great. It works well. And the video breaks down how to use it yourself. So tip one, make sure you have a template always necessary. Every, every top tier producer has a template. Tip number two is also going to be a simplistic one, but I hate clicking over in these fields. I don't do it unless I'm like forgetting something or I'm like, oh, it's in this file, but I don't know what it's called. And that's to always hit control F if you're on Windows. And I know this is Ableton specific, but if you are in like Logic or FL and you hear these like tips or tricks of like workflow, I'm sure you can type up the equivalent in your DAW and learn them as well. So control F searches everything. So if I wanted to, I don't know, OTT, it's right there, right? If I wanted to add I don't know, vocoder, boom. I don't have to keep clicking. Um, if I wanted to add a certain sample, like this one that I always use, boom, I have it there. Super simple. So control F on Windows, whatever the equivalent is to control on Mac. I don't use Mac, so I'm not sure. Uh, that's tip number two. Tip number three is going to be saving synth racks. So 
let's go here real quick. Um, we're going to, I think this, cool, perfect. This is already a serum. So say we had this saw and we're going to do like, I don't know, a typical Reese. I don't, I'll do it here now because I never save this. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. So I, I love using um, this one Reese. Uh, my buddy gave me actually, his name's Omas, phenomenal producer. Um, if you haven't heard of him, check him out. But I really do like this um, Reese a lot. So I'm going to turn down the bit information. I'm going to make sure the that looks good. And I always do this with anything that's going to have like um, low end. I always just print base and mono. Bada bing. We'll do like 150. Cool. Now I can just group these together, which is control G and um, Ableton. And down here you can set this and I'll do um, Omos Reese base because that's his. But now, and if we tie these together, so say I'm in audio, I can go to Omos Reese base and say I have a MIDI channel. I drag it here, and bada bing, what we just set up. So now I don't have to keep setting up utility. I don't have to put in the EQ. I don't have to bring down the the mono, which I brought in. It's all taken care of for me. So super unique. Use that to your advantage rather than just saving a serum patch. And then if you have a ton of post-processing after it, save it all together. No need to go through that again because, once again, that time is just going to keep overlapping. Tip number four is going to be actually in your options here. If you go to your preferences and you go to your record warp and launch, you'll see right here default warp plugin. At default, it's set to beats, which if you're doing a lot of beat stuff, um, it's probably good for you. But I do a lot of like uh, texture warping and stuff with my bases. So I was tired of every time I dragged in like, let's just say a sample here. Let's just add one in. We'll add one from my sample pack, which if you're new here as well, I have a free sample pack. Um, I'll link in the description for you as well. Uh, it can make, it has everything, drums, effects, sub, vocals, basses, the full nine yards. But let's just grab a growl real quick and I'm gonna turn it down. All right, so we, we drag this guy in, right? And then usually it would be, if I put on warp, it would be here and I'd have to go down to complex or complex pro and do extra clicking. I did that for a long time. I probably switched this probably about six months ago, but I'm a big fan of complex. Um, I have the CPU to run like complex and complex pro. Um, so that's one thing I would say is just choose your favorite warp mode. That way you don't have to keep clicking to it. And yeah, there's sometimes I'll have to go back to beats and then transient mode for like drums if I'm transposing them. But I do that far less than messing with complex settings. So that is tip number four. Tip number five is actually going to teeter off this, and which is how to stretch something. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this. Uh, so you have to have it warp on, but if you hold control and shift, um, or whatever the Mac is, and you drag this, you can stretch it. And you can see the segment BPM down here change. Um, along with that, say you stretch something out, you can bring it back in. And if you hit control, shift, and alt all at once, you can sift through the project like that. Yeah, so you don't have to go down here. You don't have to do this stuff. Um, you can literally just, you know, if you have cool texture, you can be like, okay, let me find the sweet spot. Boom, we have it now. So super, super um, nice for workflow overall, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I think I learned this from, like, NASCO, like, back when I was first learning producing. I would watch some of his videos, and I was like, oh, that's, like, so cool. I didn't know you could do that. So definitely want to tell you guys that. Next is going to be finding original samples. So uh, let's go to this. I already know what it's called, but I took this um, sample right here, and I'm going to put it on my headphones real quick. And it sounds like this. Super simple. Okay. And then I just transposed it and stretched it like this. Which actually sounds really cool. I might actually end up using that in something eventually. But what I want to show you is if you, for some reason, change the name of it, which is why I put blah, 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 and you didn't know where you could find the original, like you're like, oh, man, I wish I could use original because I want to go back to it. And maybe you've already saved, closed out of your project file, so control z is not an option. You can go, let's just go out of here. Let's go to plugins or something. You can go click on the file, and right up here, as long as you haven't consolidated it, so if you control j it, then it's its own thing. But if you haven't, you can go right here, and it tells you exactly where you got it. But if you control J it, quick, now it's going to be blah, blah, blah in the project file. So, doesn't matter. So, but if it's not, 
you can find the original right here. So, my bad. So super cool, super unique, um, or not unique, but super easy to find samples that you use if you need to find them real quick. Number seven is one that a lot of people don't know, and it may not be the biggest workflow, but it definitely changed my workflow which is changing grids. For sure, you can just keep it on narrow, and as you zoom out, it's super convenient as well. Narrow is probably one of my favorites I used to keep it on, but now I just keep it on grids. So how can you change it without clicking it? Well, if you hit Control-1, and watch this number down here, get smaller, Control-2, bigger. And even cooler, the one thing you always have to click to is triplet, but if you hit Control-3, triplets. And then if you don't want grid, Control-4. Now you have no grid. So I use these more than all the time is all I can say because I'm always changing grids. I don't really use narrow that much more, even though narrow is fantastic. Um, either or is fine, but it's really cool to be able to switch into triplet or off grid as well. Number eight is super simplistic, but um, let me show you here. And it's, it's literally just save your projects with your key. Um, if you're not super musically music theory based like I am, getting opening a project file that you forgot and you're like looking for me i'd always be looking for my base note my sub it just takes a little bit of time so what you can do here is just literally right here like e minor d major so next one is just getting rid of time on uh, time in general so if you can go here you can go create silence which is just control i or capture and insert silence um so if you wanted to get rid of time and let me put something else here like I don't know so say like this and for some reason you want to get rid of like this section you can hold control shift and hit delete and watch the bars it slides back it got rid of those bars completely and same if you hit control oh no that's not it if you hit control I you can add that time so if you need to add two bars boop. and yeah super convenient so um, if you need to insert time or get rid of it it's either um, Control, control shift delete to get rid of, of your selected area or control I on your selected area to add the time back in. And the last one is probably the most simplistic one for Ableton, but I see people don't know what it is. So to add a audio lane in, control T. And to add a MIDI, it's, contr <laughs> it's control shift T. Boom. So those are 10 easy tips in Ableton that will help improve your workflow. If you learned something new, comment down below what it was. If you want to add to this and add knowledge, then comment another cool tip below as well. Um, I really hope we can hit 500 followers on SoundCloud in the next week because I do want to give you guys some free stuff as well. I, you know, I love giving free tools for you guys to succeed and grow. So um, if you're not following, uh, hit the first link below. And it'll be the first one there. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and this helped you out. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.